Hey, I'm Kim Schmidt, Executive Editor of Farm Equipment. Welcome to Farm Equipment's Used Equipment Remarketing Roadmaps Podcast. In this episode, host Casey Seymour and Aaron Fintel of Moving Iron LLC sit down with Tim Short from Australian Harvest. So Tim is a guy we met online, Kate, and he you know, talks, talked to us back and forth, got him on here. He works for a case dealership over there in, uh, in Australia. So Tim, tell everybody where you work at and kind of the geographical area that you guys cover. So I work in uh, central west of New South Wales, a uh, state on the eastern coast of Australia. Um, we are about 400 k's west of Sydney. And we have three dealerships. Uh, the townships we operate in are uh, Narromine, Warren and Gilgandra. Predominantly dry land, wheat. We do have irrigated cotton. Macquarie Valley is one of the um, founding cotton growing valleys in Australia. So it makes up a large portion of, of what we do. Uh, we also have a large portion of um, livestock being sheep and cattle. You'd love that, Aaron, sheep. Absolutely. Except they're the wrong kind. Oh, not, not the dorpers. There's more and more. Uh, we run there, as but, well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. A lot of Rambolets yeah. though, right? Australia is the land of the, or Merino. Merino. Is no, Merino? Wool. Yeah. Well, we'll, yeah. Yep. Ramble lay, huh? I'm, I'm done. Okay. I'm done. All right. I, I had my little geek, I had my little geek out. So you had your, your man. I'm good. It's good. Yeah. I about went down there and started stuffing wool bags and German yeah. hooves, but we don't have time. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so so Tim, come on, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about what's happening there and I'll show you. So Australia is the complete opposite of what we're at right now. And different different times of the season, those things kind of going on. So for instance, we're in t shirts. Right. And he's in a hoodie inside. Right. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's cold, cold, wet, which is quite unseasonable for uh, this time of the year. We, we, we're not usually as wet as what we have been. So we're coming out of the, out of the back of or off the back of three really um, super wet winters. Um, and the challenge we have at the moment is, and again, we're directly opposite to you with your uh, weather, you guys are quite dry, which is unseasonable. Um, we're struggling to finish off winter crop planting and also to, especially in the Macquarie Valley, we're struggling to, there's some guys that are not even 50% through pick. In a normal year, we would be well and truly done. Okay, so you're, so you're being bogged down then, yeah. Yeah, we are. And, and I was talking to a farmer the other day and he was saying, the challenge is going. This is going to be the challenge at harvest time because there's so much diff, um, because there's so much uh, time between when they first start planning to when they're going to finish. It's right. going to be stop, start, stop, start, which is right. going to be a challenge. Harvest mm. nightmare. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That's hurry it. up, but, hurry up, uh, and wait. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. That's hurry it. Wait. So, yeah. yeah, so complete opposite to you guys. Yep. So unfortunately, you're not the complete opposite of us when it comes to uh, equipment availability and getting stuff to you. I, I've got to imagine that we're struggling over here, and where where most of the stuff's getting uh, in manufactured. And I got to believe just because of lead times, getting stuff across the ocean, out of ports, and everything else, that that you're you just have got to have this huge extrapolation of of what we think is bad. You probably wish you had. So I guess. As you're looking at that that situation right now, Tim, what are some of the struggles you're seeing, and how are you uh, communicating that with your customers? And then, I guess, also, what are your customers' reaction to that? So, I guess we've been in this path for a little while now. So, in terms of communicating with our customers, it's it's a weekly, or as soon as we have know the information, we're we're passing it on to our customers. Right, right. Um, it's 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 the only way to be. Um, Probably ninety percent of the customers we've been in this. We've been this has been our normal, I guess you could say. So whilst they're not overly happy, they're accepting of the situation. They know that that's just life now. And I think um, what I think what we're going to start to see is we're probably going to start to see those opportunistic guys have to start planning their equipment purchases. Instead of so gone are the day gone are going to be the days where they wake up and they want and they like oh I need a new Magnum I'm going to go buy one today that isn't going to happen right so they're going to they're going to have to be more planning okay and your guys 
probably do this better than what our guys do in terms of when they're going to plan, plan to put machines in. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to change their purchasing uh, decisions and planning. Yeah. Well, um, and, and, and we noticed that like with the early order programs this year, mm-hmm. they were open for about 30 seconds. We had, yeah, I did hear that. Right. We had everything already done, already in the hopper, and it's go, click enter, done. <laughs> the world sold out like instantly. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't take very long. Yeah. Man, it is, mm-hmm. it's just crazy. Mm-hmm. You, even, you know, you get, it used to be you could not talk a guy into ordering a planner in June. He's like, I just got done. How am I supposed to put my name on something now? that I won't see for a year. And now it's like, please put your name on this. And we hope we see it in a year. And he's like, yes, get, get two of them because that other one will be two years later and that'll be my second trade. So. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. We've, we've had um, customers do that as well. The same, um, the same thing, right? I've I've got one and I'm waiting for it. So by the time that one gets here, I'm probably going to be not far off needing another one. So I might as well put the order in for another one now. Right. Um, it's, uh, and we've been a little bit the same with combine harvesters. We've always we've always had the early order program, and people have been prepared to wait. Um, it's probably not drama. Is not actually getting the combines. It is more so the fronts that we're having trouble with. Yeah. So, and I think that's a worldwide worldwide right. issue um, from one of the front suppliers. So. Last time you were on here, you were, we were talking about used equipment and kind of how the buying pattern of used equipment buyers were and those kind of things. And you were talking about, you know, the, the late model, low hour stuff. You know, there was questions about why would you be getting rid of this stuff this early? You know, have you seen any any change in that with guys that are like, you know what, I have a chance to really maybe make a few dollars by selling this, assuming that I've got one to replace it with I me. Mean, are you seeing some of that trickle down where you've, maybe there's a little more openness to some late model, low hour stuff in your area. I think it is starting to change, but I think, I think the the scarcity of equipment is starting to change that mindset. Right. So there's a, there's a tractor sitting on the fence. I need it. I'm going to get it because if I don't, someone else is going to. So that's probably not so much the questioning more so now compared to what it was earlier. They're just like, we're going to book that. Yeah, right. There it is. It's available now. I'll take it. Yeah, that's it. That's right. it. Are you so, seeing a lot? Are you seeing some transactional stuff between you no know, farmer to farmer type of thing? Are you seeing some of that kind of stuff where they're circumventing the whole the whole process altogether and just selling more stuff on their own? Yes. Yeah. A lot of guys and. In some cases, we're also encouraging that sure. because we don't have to we don't have to deal with it. Yeah. So and and to be fair, they're going to get more money, which is going to reduce their changeover. Right. So yeah, we're saying saying that <laughs> the only danger with that is because it is so easy to sell at the moment. They're all going to think that it's very it's very easy. Forever. Selling is yeah. a very easy yeah. process, but yeah. it's not because yeah. when it's tough, it's tough. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Soak it up now, guys, because the how much is that? 169. Okay, write it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna end. It's gonna end. <laughs> and yeah, everybody's gotta it. learn how to sell again. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's that's different. right. Yeah. But you know, given given the what we've noticed a lot of here, which ties into the guys selling their own machinery, this whole gamut is you you might have a tractor that brings a hundred at an auction but never in a million years would we even ask that you know we're still at like an ask 90 and take less and you you get so much feed into that world and guys going, well, er- everything's up, everything's up, everything's up. Well, certain things are up. Everything's hard to get, but certain things are up. Not all of it is up. You know, the banged out high hour stuff, it's still a commodity. 
you know, it is what it is. So you run, you run into, a, we're, we're seeing more and more of that, which is fueling, you know, to piggyback with what you guys are doing, the, here's our number. You might get this. You're more than welcome to have at it. So, yep. Mm. Mm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And it, and it, it works well. It's, it's a, it's fallback position and um, yeah, go for it. We'll get back to Casey, Aaron, and Tim in a moment, but in the meantime, mark your calendars for January 9th and 10th for the 2023 Precision Farming Dealer Summit in St. Louis. The 2023 Precision Farming Dealer Summit offers a mix of general sessions featuring top industry experts, profit-boosting dealer-to-dealer panels, and highly interactive roundtable discussions. To learn more and to register, visit precisionsummit.com. Now back to Casey, Aaron, and Tim as they get into the cotton harvest and planting season down in Australia. So right now you're you're in the middle of uh, cotton harvest, right? And mm-hmm. and you've got some planting going on, some seeding going on, some wheat, and those kind of things. So I guess talk about that a little bit and and what you see happening there. I know you've got some weather struggles, like you talked about. It's, it's wet, so whether you're planting or uh, harvesting right now, when it's when it's wet and nasty out, it always sucks. So I'm sure you got just the most you know upbeat and happy customers on the planet right now, but if you if you were to take a step back and take a look, I mean, price of cotton right now is doing really well. Obviously, the yeah. price of wheat's doing good too. So, I guess in your area, are you seeing more wheat get planted and more guys planted to look at cotton? You know, especially cotton going in the spring, a lot could change between now and then. But do you see a lot more wheat acres going in, and are you seeing a lot more um, upbeat kind of thought processes around wheat than anything else right now? Yeah, there is there is a lot more up. Like they're all very buoyant at the moment because commodities are up. That been a long time since it's been like this. Um, the other thing too, especially with cotton. So because ninety nine percent of the cotton grown here is uh, flood irrigated. Okay. So our water storage dams are full. So there is depending on the season, but there is probably two to maybe three years of water stored. So cotton growers are excited about that. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're looking at, it's, it's gonna look very favorable um, for the next three, especially in that cotton sector. And I, I can't see pricing, I can't see, see the bottom falling out of that anytime soon. Right. Um, in terms of dry land, wheat and cereals, yeah, there's a lot of wheat going in um they're probably cut back on their oil seeds so we we do grow a lot of canola here but probably not as much as they do in the south um they've probably cut that back a little bit just due to um the wet conditions um but yeah that's going to be the uh that's going to be the challenge i think because some guys have started it was dry they started and it's been wet and they've had to stop and they've started again. So harvest time is going to be a real staggered harvest. Right. Um, however, in, in talk, getting out and talking to farmers, yes, it's a challenge, but they are like, we'd prefer to have this than dust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot more opportunities in what they're doing um, and, and couple that with livestock as well. You know, a lot of these bigger dryland guys have got a flock of livestock um so you know they're they're still bringing really good money as well um so that um they're not chasing feed and water and things like that for them yep sure absolutely all right tim so looking out right now i guess as you look out what going through the end of the year here i mean you're you're in winter right you're you're winter months right now so you're middle of winter first day of winter was two days ago for you so so you, have, mm-hmm. you have that going on and that. So I guess as you look through this going into spring, are you getting any kind of indication? Are you seeing anything, some light at the end of the tunnel that's going to break open a little bit and, and get, get the supply of uh, parts and equipment and those kind of things to you? Yeah, it's a good question. I've thought a lot about that. Um, I think the only way it's going to fast track is – if we have a slowing in demand now, right. now 
in Australia, we've just had a change of government as well. So that's something that's happened since. Um, and we've got uh, record inflation. And the only, obviously, the only way to keep a lid on inflation is to increase interest rates. Yep. Now, a lot of us work on subsidised interest rates, be it from uh, CNH Capital or John Deere Financial. However, those interest rates will still rise, I think. And I think that may start to put the brakes on, um, which might start to slow the market, which will allow manufacturers to catch up. Um, that's the only thing I can really see. Or if we do, if the um, Bureau of Meteorology is completely wrong and we go into a La Nina phase or a um, El Nino phase um, and our conditions back off. That's the only thing. That's the only thing. There's got to be something that's going to be the leveler, I guess. And it's, it's going to be one of those two things, I, I think, to slow that market down. Something to hit reset a little bit. Yeah, that's it, the reset. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure if, what your thoughts are on that with, with what you're seeing in your markets. You know, I think we're, we're seeing something very similar to now. I mean, we look at... Um, you know, we're switching from a La Nina to an El Nino phase as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, that for us means that we're going to go from a, a, a warmer, drier um, type of climate to more of a, a cooler, wetter uh, type of climate and kind of give some really good opportunities to, to see some things there. Um, we have uh, a few other things that are kind of in play right now. If you look at our weather patterns and those kind of things that, that could um, – have a dramatic effect on on overall production and not in a lack of production, but a, you know, a really huge upscale in production and what that looks like over the next couple of years. So we have an opportunity to, to really see some things move in a direction that, that take us down from this, you know, $7, $8, you know, corn thing to, to something more like maybe it's, maybe it's four fifty or five bucks. Um, maybe it's six bucks. Who knows what that looks like? Five dollar corn is a new three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's weird to say that. <laughs> but then you start looking at right now. I mean, if you look at our our futures right now, I want to say July wheat is ten sixty five, which has come down quite a bit. Oh yeah, it was almost thirteen bucks there for a minute. Yeah, um, well, so that's unreal. So we have we've seen some stuff there, but I think a lot of the stuff is settling down. You know, again, the inflationary thing, just like you talked about or record, not record high inflation, but we're the highest inflation we've seen in 40 years, you know, since the eighties mm. um, and what we've got going on there. So there's a lot of headwinds that we're, that we're, you know, facing against right now, but, you know, I can't say that uh, when we sit back and take a look at the overall marketplace, that there's any lack of demand, right? Interest rates have mm. come up. No, oh, God, I bet interest rates have risen four and a half percent since the first of the year doubled. Um, you know, so we went from that's your cash. Level. Is that your cash, cash? That's your um, basis cash rate from the reserve yeah. bank. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, no, I take that back. No, from our reserve bank, we've gone up a point and a half. Now we're supposed yeah. to see another okay. three quarters of a point jump up. I'm talking like, you know, like the lending institutions that you know, the John Financials or Agdirex. Mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. We've seen, mm -hmm. you know, we went from right around two and a half to three to you know, here we are, almost hitting right about six. You know. Depending on what it is, we're going to see some jumps next month, see what those things happen. But with all that being said, nope, I have yet to see anybody go, you know what? This interest rate thing is just, uh, it's too scary for me and I'm going to, I'm going to back off right now. Right. I've not seen anybody do that yet. And mm -hmm. I really mm -hmm. thought when we hit, you know, five and a half and 6% that we would, we would see some of that, but we haven't. And I don't know if you're seeing something like that where you have customers that are sitting back going like, oh, man, this inflation deal and interest rates. Da, da, da. I mean, maybe we should stop a little bit. But kind of what you said earlier, it doesn't sound like they are either. No, no, it's not. We're not seeing that. And okay. um, I can remember many years ago, I can remember selling or financing equipment at 8.5% and the market was still buying it at 8.5%. So yeah. there is always going to be an appetite for that. Um, right. But I think coming out of, and, and I guess we've got some younger farmers, especially in our area that are coming up, you know, the next generation who've never, who've, who've not seen that in the past 10 years. Um, so they, 
it'll be interesting to see how they deal with that. Yeah, I mean, y- you see that a lot with the the up and comers, if you will, you know, and those guys going, "Wow, six percent interest!" Be like, <laughs> throw put you could put a one in front of that, you know, a few decades ago. So hold on, man. It it could, it could get wild before it gets better, but yeah. I think, and that's yeah. just the world we're in. Mm. Not any, mm. there's nothing yeah, one right. single soul can do about it except. Deal with what you're given. So, that's, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly right. We've got, we've got a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunity, I think, to see some stuff happen. It will be interesting, though. This is something, and, and you, you tell me what you think here, too, Tim, what you see in your areas, is that once, you know, the factories get caught up and everyone's getting their stuff like they're supposed to be getting it, a lot of this, you know, I'll take it, you know, at any price thing is going to go away pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Right. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> once, once yeah. supply and, and, and you know catches up with demand, so uh, I, I guess are you, what are you seeing that from that perspective? Do you, are you seeing something similar to that? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will. Um, but you know what'll happen? Supply will free up, and we'll be right. in a screaming drought in Australia, which will bring back demand. Right. Un- unfortunately, so because. Realistically, yeah, the next dry period is, is not that far away. So based on records. Right. So we'll um and you, yeah, guys, yeah, have, I, I you think, guys have drought like the rest of the world doesn't. When you guys yeah, have drought, we do, it's, so. it is crazy drought. It is. And the I guess the last drought that we've just come out of or well, the, the three year drought from about seventeen to about twenty was by far the worst that anyone has ever seen um, right. in living memory. So, and I guess everyone's, because it was so severe and for so long, people are still struggling with a little bit of PTSD from that, if you know what I mean. If it hasn't rained <laughs> yeah. for two weeks, people are going, oh, shit. Yeah, absolutely. It's getting dry. Yeah, so, yeah. It um, didn't rain this week. Yeah. Turn that tractor off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. So, um. But, yeah, I think that's probably what we're going to see. Um, Casey, I think, yeah, I would agree with what, what you're seeing um, down there in terms of the fact that that year will pick at any price is, is, is going to quickly evaporate. Yep. When it does, it's going to cause a big problem. Um, mm, big, it bigger, is. A big problem. I mean, a bigger problem, not just for the dealers, but, I mean, the you know, whole market. I mean, it's just going to be a, a big a big chain reaction. And that's – that's the challenge, I guess, for dealers is picking when that happens because you don't want to be loaded with inventory when that does happen because, you know, our customers have to order so far out. We've got to do the same thing. Right. So at what time do we put the brakes on? That's why we have to be analysing what's going on so we can maybe start to pick a pattern um, so that we, we can move up on the ordering and, and right. get retailed what's coming our way. Because that floor plan interest can be quite relentless. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to. They like getting paid. They don't ever forget about it. They never do. They're like, <laughs> sent that bill, didn't we? Oh, yeah, I'll get him next month. Yeah. <laughs> well, we sent that check. It's number six eight nine three. Oh, okay, you're good. Yeah, that was close. <laughs> they almost caught us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got us. Yeah. So, hmm. well, good stuff, man. Uh, Tim. Anything else you want to make sure we talk about here before we close down the podcast? Uh, no, I think that's about time. I think we've covered most things that are happening. So, um, yeah, it's just going to be going to be interesting to pick that, um, you know, that slow. I think that'll be the next thing for focus for us as well, is picking when that market's going to turn around right. or when that, when that demand's going to slow. Right. right. Yeah. I already got it. I already have my day picked. When it's going to happen, I'm just not <laughs> telling anybody. <laughs> yep, see exactly what I thought. Told you guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah. When, when it happens, you can say, you. "Yeah, that's yeah. it." See, I told you the whole time. Yeah, that's it. I've never had my head the whole time. Yep. So, all mm-hmm. right, Tim. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to be on here. I know you you're you, you're on a your your Saturday afternoon right now, so I uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be on here, man. Yeah, no problems at all. So it was a pleasure to catch up with you guys. Thank you. How, how's the rugby season? 
Uh, yeah, not too bad. We're uh, we're six from seven, and we've got a rugby game this afternoon. So, yeah, we've got our got our young fellas playing on the uh, on the senior ground. So that's a a big thing for them. Right on. So yeah, yeah, hell yeah, that'll be cool. All right, oh, man. So Tim, so, folks, want to reach out to you, get more information about what it is you're doing, man. What's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way to do that is uh, obviously by my email, which is tim at three rm dot com dot au. Okay. Aaron, what's the best way to get hold of you? Uh, call me, text me, 308-760-1193. Also on Facebook and LinkedIn by my name, Aaron Fintel. Fintel. Um, on Twitter, the Ag Twitterverse, at Aaron Fintel. And uh, email, Aaron.Fintel at movingironllc.com. And what about you, Mr. Seymour? Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC, LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast. And you can see us all on the YouTube channel that we have here. That's the Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. And uh, it's the video version of what we're doing here. So check that out. You can also, uh, if you want to see all the stuff Moving Iron related, go to movingironllc.com and you'll see uh, blog posts, the library of the Moving Iron Podcast, plus all the information for the Moving Iron Summit coming up in Nashville, Tennessee, September 6th, 7th, and 8th, which I hope to see you at, Tim. Um, hopefully you can, can make the trek across the ocean there. That'd be great. Start paddling, buddy. You, you by time, <laughs> yeah, just go. You'll be here before you know it. And uh, so so you'd want, if you're interested in that, check that out. All the information is there. Or you can send me an email at movingironpodcast at movingironpodcast.com, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. A uh, good friend, Alex Chenko, is over in Ukraine right now delivering humanitarian aid. If you're interested in helping Alex, go to the YouTube or go to the YouTube, go to the um, show notes here and you'll see a link to this GoFundMe page. Check that out. And uh, or you can just go to GoFundMe.com and you can help uh, you go to Alex, help Alex deliver humanitarian, humanitarian aid, aid to the Ukraine. Ukraine. No, from Poland, from Poland to the Ukraine. To the Ukraine. Yeah. Right. yeah. So check that out and you'll be able to help him out there. So with that, I am Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennell and Tim Short. Let's go smart folks. Thanks Casey, Aaron, and Tim for sharing your conversation with us. You can keep up on the latest industry news by registering online to receive our free newsletters. Visit www.farm-equipment.com. For Casey, Aaron, and Tim, as well as our entire staff here at Farm Equipment, I'm Kim Schmidt. Thanks for listening.